hey, we're looking at linear patterns today. So let's just get started. We're looking at y is equal to negative 3x plus 7. How do we graph that? I see that my y-intercept, b, and I have a slope of negative 3. So I go up 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then I'm going to count down 1, 2, 3 to the, to the right 1. 1, 2, 3 to the right 1. 1, 2, 3 to the right 1. Go ahead and connect these. And I have a graph of y equals negative 3x plus 7. I want to know what the average rate of change is. So the average rate of change is the slope between two points on your graph. And, well, does the slope change between any two points on the graph of the line? No. So average rate of change, which we call a rock in a linear graph, graph or equation is the slope. Okay, so the slope, a rock, the average rate of change is equal to negative 3 or negative 3 over 1. We're going to write the equation from the table. So right now what I need to look at is are the x's changing in a consistent way? So um, Two, negative 2 plus what gives me negative 1? Plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. They're con uh, changing in a consistent way. So I'm going to look on the right. The y value should also change in a consistent way if this is a linear pattern. So I'm subtracting 3, subtracting 3, subtracting 3, subtracting 3. So my slope is my y about the change in y over the change in x. So we're going to do the slope is equal to negative 3 over 1, which is the change in y over the change in x, or y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So the slope is negative 3. My y-intercept is when x is equal to 0, the y is equal to 7. So my y-intercept is 0, comma, 7. I'm going to write this in point-slope form. So that would be y minus y1 is equal to the slope times x minus x1. I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. The y is negative 7 is equal to the slope. Oops, I just keep writing the letters. Negative 3 times x minus my x1 which is 0. I'm going to simplify. y minus 7 is equal to negative 3x plus 0. I'm going to add 7 to both sides, giving me y is equal to negative 3x plus 7. I just proved to you that slope point works. I have a y-intercept of 7 and a slope of negative 3. We're going to take a look to see if these are linear patterns. Um, we have to make sure that we have a constant rate of change. which is the slope, okay? So let's start with A. We've already done this one. Negative 3, 10 minus, minus 3 gives me 7. 7 minus 3 gives me 4. 4 minus 3 gives me 1. The x's are also changing in, in the same consistent pattern. So plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. 1 plus 2, it, 1 plus 1 is 2. Okay, so I can see that my slope is going to be negative 3 over 1. So this is linear. The next one, we're adding 2, adding 3, adding 4, adding 5. The x's are adding 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. And 3 plus 1 is 4. I don't have a consistent, I'm not changing by a consistent number here. Between, so between 0 and 1, I'm adding 2, then 3, then 4, then 5. This is not linear or nonlinear. Okay. Last one. I'm adding 1, adding, adding 2, whoops, adding 4, 
adding eight. Um, well, I noticed another pattern. This is not linear because we're not adding the same amount every time. This is nonlinear. We see another pattern here. All the y values are changing by times two. Two times two is four. Four times two is eight. Eight times two is 16. This is exponential. And this is our only linear pattern. So constant rate of change. All right, so how can you test if a pattern is linear from a table? You have to test to make sure that there is a constant rate of change between the points, between all points. So the same slope all the time. So basically same slope. A graph, it's a straight line, which means that it has a constant slope. An equation, it has two variables. both raised to the first power. So like y is equal to x or a is equal to um, 4t plus 1. So in this case, two variables, they just are not our traditional x and y, but I have an exponent of 1, an exponent of 1, exponent of 1, exponent of 1. Okay. Lastly, we're going to evaluate, we're going to do a little algebraic um, evaluating. So f of x, when does that equal 0? Remember, this is your y value, so we're going to plug it in for f of x. 0 is equal to 3x plus 5. I'm going to subtract 5. I got 3x is equal to negative 5. Divide by 3, I get x is equal to negative 5. Thirds. So I basically have an x intercept at negative 5 thirds. And we can write this as a point negative 5 over 3, comma 0. Next up, when is f of x less than 0? So we're going to start with f of x is equal to 0, or is equal to 3x plus 5. We're going to replace this with f of x is less than zero. That's what we want to figure out. So basically, this function right here is equal to this calculation. So I'm going to plug it in for f of x. 3x plus 5 has to be less than zero. How do I solve for x? Well, I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. 3x is less than, is less than negative 5. And divide by 3, giving me x is less than negative 5 thirds. And we can draw that in a number line. So if I have 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 5 thirds is almost at negative 2. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and use an open circle. And the values that are less than five, negative 5 thirds are the ones that are going to work. Next, let's do, uh, when is f of x equal to g of x? So I'm going to replace the calculation of f of x in for f of x, 3x plus 5, is equal to the calculation for g of x, negative 2x plus 15. All right, so we're going to just solve here and add 2x to both sides, giving me 5x plus 5 is equal to 15. Then move our constants together. So 5x is equal to 10 divided by 2. Ooh, divide by 5, and I gave you the answer. And x is equal to 2. Okay. Um, we should test it. So I'm just going to test it up here. 3 times 2 plus 5 is 11, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, plus 15 is 11. So that is the value that gives us an equal two equal equations. All right, so same thing, but we're going to have an inequality this time. So we're going to start with 3x plus 5, because that's f of x, and g of x is negative 2 
x plus 15. We want to know when f of x is going to be greater than g of x. So we go ahead and we just solve. 3x is greater than or equal to negative 15. Plus 10. And then I'm going to add 2x to both sides. We did that backwards this time. So 5x is greater than or equal to 10. And then divide by 5. So I get x is equal to 10. 2. x is equal to 2. Greater than or equal to. On a number line, we look like this 0, 1, 2, 3. Do we use an open or closed circle at 2? We use a uh, closed circle because it's greater than or equal to. And then it's the values to the right. We can go ahead and test a value like 3. So I'm going to plug in 3 for x. Okay, 3 times 3 is 9 plus 5 is 14. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Uh, negative 6 plus 15 is 9. So is 14 greater than or equal to 9? Yes, that does work out. Okay, that's it for this review lesson on lines.